Oh. All right, good morning, guys. Out in the sunshine, which is rather unique, I think. Um, some seriously bad weather coming tomorrow, I think, and uh, later in the week, so trying to get out now. Anyway, I'm back down pet level. Tide's on its way out. So, thought I'd come down here and uh, have a little play. I've got the RX-10 Mark IV with me. And uh, the uh, Mavic Mini as well. And it's not windy. It's lovely and calm. Some interesting shadows going on, as you can see here. And uh, so let's have a little, uh, little wander. Take a few photos, a bit of slow motion video possibly. Put the drone up for a minute or two just to get a look and see. And, uh, utilising these old groins are amazing. Um, really nice, interesting shapes and things like that. So let's make the most of those. Yeah, for there really. So anyway, let's uh, get snapping. As you can see here, just a little time lapse walking along. The tide was quite quickly um, sort of uh, going out, which was quite nice. Just timed it perfectly. Arriving, a little bit of 250 frames a second slow motion. Shooting everything on the RX-10 Mark IV. And uh, obviously using the Mavic Mini drone as well and the uh, GoPro Hero 7 Black. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it. Any questions, please ask. Um, and uh, just, just an insight of another lovely day. So there's a little dog there running around. A little bit of another slow motion there. Um, so hopefully you enjoy and uh, please comment below and don't forget to click the subscribe button as well. Oh guys, the sun's gone behind the cloud a little bit. Um, but the rocks are starting to get exposed now. A few of the birds have um, landed just up here to have a bit of obviously a bit of breakfast. So obviously the uh, shellfish and stuff has probably been exposed. So let's see if we can get a few shots here. Let's take a bit of Chanel just so we can have a look. They're like wader birds. It's kind of cool. Loads of them actually. So let's see what we can get. Some more landing in. I don't know if we've got anything then, but it wasn't really paying much attention. Problem with stones, they can hear you coming. <laughs> so, anyway. But pet level, I think you might have seen before if you've watched, um, watched some of my videos before. Pet level was actually, there's some birds out to sea coming past. Cruising past low, don't know how they do it, fly literally seconds, you know, sorry, centimetres above the water. Um, yeah, under here basically is an old forest apparently. And I've seen the tree trunks, so this must have been obviously a lot less sea and more um, sort of green with trees and, and grass and whatever. So I'm not sure how far out it would have been, but um, there's plenty of sort of fossilised. Um, that's the thing with the RX-10 for you, they miss nothing. There's a few birds close-ish there, but they generally run, they're quite funny. I go again. So they come back. So what I might do is just perch my bum behind this groin here. Out the way. Get a little vantage point. Because they'll come back in a minute. Steady, 
always keep two eyes open generally. Um, my left eye is actually focusing around the area so I can see if any birds are coming in um, you know, from a distance. Sort of the wide angle version. And uh, we can uh, always see sort of the surroundings. It takes a bit of getting used to. And over the years, I've sort of, I can almost independently focus my eyes when I need to. It's weird, but it kind of works. Yeah. They're noisy birds, aren't they? But um, this thing's a very, you know, when they bring out the Mark V version of one of these, I don't know what else, you know, if we're going to get a better sensor. I mean, they've taken long enough about it now, it's almost getting on to three years um, in October. But obviously, it's probably been designed three years ago, maybe, maybe more. Um, so, you know, if we get a, a better quality sensor, a bigger battery and stuff like that, this, this thing's going to be unstoppable, you know. They can probably, if they keep the 24 to 600 mil lens and give us 32 megapixels, for example, it, and in good light, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to give us a lot more um, usability, um, you know, than we've got now, even though this is amazing already, you know. Um, so, oh, come a few more birdies. To land. Some more. Yeah. But yeah, no, so I mean, hopefully this year at some point we might get a replacement, but it means nothing really compared to you know the Mark 1, 2, 3, and, and the 4. They're all brilliant cameras still, the same as all the other cameras out there, it doesn't matter what make you buy really. But for me, the RX10 uh, Mark IV has really been a worthwhile um, purchase, you know. So it's been really, really worthwhile. Let's see if we can find a um, tree. Walk out on the mud a bit. But um, oh, he's hovering there. In fact, they're not that bothered. I'm shooting into the sun a bit. But... Let's go, but anyway. Um, so this stuff here is obviously rock. And it can be a bit slippery. But the more it goes out... Oh, there we go. Some doggies down there as well. Over that way. Are they going to come back? That's the question. Oh. Right, we're going to get these dogs going in the uh, in the water. Could be quite cool to see. So a few of the birds have stayed. There's two of them sat here, literally. Not that bothered. Um, this doesn't feel like rocks, this stuff. It's very strange. Um, but I love having the ocean nearby. I want to get that dog in the water. <laughs> right, let's carefully walk out here. Have a look at a bit of sea wildlife. Oh, hello. You really isn't bothered, are you? <laughs> you gonna go? Can't see straight into the sun there. But what we get some crabs and stuff, I never know. See the rocks are already appearing. Ah. 
right there. Ah, there we go. So that is a bit of tree. See it? This bit here, my foot is. That's actually part of the tree. So it's mad. You know, you think, you know, the world we as we know it was very different a while ago. So obviously, guys, I've just tried to cover as much as I uh, have uh, been doing this morning and uh, having a wander around. So here's a few photos. Um, quite a bit of wildlife down there. Um, it's lovely and calm. Obviously, the tide was going out, so I think that's obviously a good time to be down there for the wildlife because obviously they're looking for fresh food in the rock pools and things like that. And it's a fabulous place. Um, it's got quite a few different looks depending on the time of year and obviously depending on how high the tide is or how low the tide is. It turns very quickly because it's very flat. So it's in and out uh, relatively quickly. So it's worth looking up um, Pet Level Beach in East Sussex um, if you want to come down and have a look. Um, and it's, like I say, it's, it's really interesting. Um, for everything from the old trees that have sort of fossilised in the, in the ground um, just to the old um, weather sort of uh, weathered wood groins that are some broken, some obviously um, shaped by the sea over a long time. Um, then I put the drone up, so um, this is obviously before the tide had gone out a bit a bit further and uh, I just flew it around a bit, just a little bit here or there um, a little bit of artistic stuff, um, if you have a look at some of my other videos you'll see the drone uh, do some other things um, but I'm just trying to give you guys a different view, angle of view to see what's going on and uh, obviously you can take some photos with this as well, yeah it's not a brilliant camera um, but actually it's pretty good um, you know, you've got you have got manual control within reason. Obviously, it's fixed aperture, but you have ISO control and shutter speed, which is really quite good. And it just gives you a different angle of view, and it's super stable. So, you know, having the GoPro and this, you know, has changed the way I can video and and give some really really lovely footage. And I'm not I'm not one of these uh, drone flyers who're going to fly it miles. Um, I just want it in the local vicinity where I'm actually shooting, doing little things like this, making the most of the the location I'm at and uh, just giving it a, just a different feel and uh, you know a better look um, for everybody to watch so you know the fact that we've got long shadows at the moment because the sun's quite low in the sky it really does um, allow me to uh, make the most of those and be able to sort of be you know anywhere from 10 feet to 400 feet up in the air um, to get photos and video it's it really does give a different dimension to you know what I can actually capture um, and brilliant the fact that the drone can just hover there I can just put the controller down and it just sits there you know while I'm you know doing what I'm doing like taking photos or whatever you can sort of just kind of see what's going on so I thought I'd just fill you in with that bit um, you know so it's working really nicely just getting more confident flying it but like I say I don't fly it more than a, a few hundred feet away from me generally because I don't see the point um, for what I need it for is everyone's got obviously different personal tastes but getting photographs like this, this is one of my, I've just actually ordered this to be printed um, just to see what the quality is like. So there'll be a new video for that as well, just to give you a, 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 an insight of how good the camera is on the uh, the Mavic Mini. Um, but you know the high contrast. Um, you know it's very bright and sunny, and it allowed me to get some really cool silhouette shots of the uh, the old groins there that have obviously been battered and weathered for years. Um, just worked really nicely, black and white and colour. So that was really really nice really enjoyed um, the morning even you know having your feet in shot you know it just adds the different element to you know sort of wandering around so um, but it's a stunning coastline it's it's very different you can go from uh, obviously Dover along towards into East Sussex from Kent and further along East Sussex where you sort of go from the the White Cliffs of Dover so sort of sandstone and, and things like that where Pet, Pet is and then further along to Beachy Head in Eastbourne where it goes back to the sort of uh, the chalk cliffs again um, so we've got quite a nice varied um, look which is really nice um, plenty of wildlife everything from buzzards to ducks to you know I don't know what type of duck that is but different types and obviously all the other animals as well um, you know which works really nicely so it's really really good that you can get out and about and uh, experiment as much as you can when the weather's nice anyway so I'm gonna head back and uh, slightly windswept but yeah, we're going to. I've got to get used to an automatic car again, which is uh, very strange, but um, also easy as well. It's uh, pretty straightforward, all electronic, mad really. But um, yeah, so 
best thing you can do though is put it in sport mode because it feels dull otherwise it's sort of no throttle response um but yeah so let's uh let's get going how well this this all look but uh yeah so good good morning shooting really um and got some drone footage was going to try out the um, ND filter on the RX10 Mark IV, but suddenly realised that the um, step down ring is the wrong way around. So it actually goes from a 77 down to a 72, not the other way around. So it's what I need to buy, which is annoying. I mean, it's only a couple of quid, so it's not a huge amount of money, but I couldn't use it unfortunately. So that was a little bit annoying. But anyway, so I moved on to being. Uh, I wanted to do some long exposures um, with the RX10 just to see what it was like with an ND filter and I've done it a couple of times before um, in the past but I lost the ND filter, I have no idea where it went so but that was only a, uh, I think a six stop so I've got a ten stop this time just to see what the difference was um, it does, it will fit on one of my lenses or two of my lenses for the A7R Mark IV so I should probably uh, utilise um, that on there and then, and then buy a um, uh, proper step down ring to make it work properly or step up ring should we say I was going to say guys um, if you enjoyed the video please um, if you subscribe um, please click the notification bell as well so you get notified when I put a new video up and I try and do a new one as much as I can try and vary them a little bit as well so you can you know have different interests um, with different the different cameras I have different styles some of the equipment I might be trying out or you know stuff like that um, you know stuff like so you know a subscription goes a long way um if you could also share the share the um, channel as well to your friends or other photographers you know um also comment on the videos as well not a problem i'm not um you know not worried about a bit of criticism as long as it's um not rude um because that's just an instant you know why why be rude there's no point um you know i don't care what brands use i'm not I, yes i use sony but i'm not like a Oh, Sony are the best of everything, blah, blah, blah. In the other day, you pick a different brand. It's like cars. You know, we all have different brands we like. Uh, you know, they're all amazing at the end of the day. So it's about using it to your best ability at the end of the day. And I chose Sony um, and uh, sort of 12, 13 years ago now and uh, stuck with them. So, you know, um, they've just got better and better over the years. And the thing is, the more that you use them, the... Uh, the better you get using the equipment and you don't have to think so much because you're not trying to learn new menus and different systems and you know that sort of stuff so it's uh, getting the best out of what you use daily makes a, a massive difference so anyway guys I'm off I shall see you soon